If I were to start talking about mini-games and side content in Lubia 2, your mind would probably come straight to the Ancient Cave, and justifiably so. This is so extensive it could be a game of its own. You have a whole nearly a hundred floors of a roguelike dungeon, randomly generated each time you go in. But that's not what I'm here to talk about today. Hello everyone, this is Arafel and I'm playing Lufia 2, and I'm going to be demonstrating my favorite casino game. Just go down the stairs here on Fort Island. We are here in the casino. There are a variety of games to play with. There's the standard slot machine here. There's a pachinko style slot, which is called the flower slots in the US version because of the flower motif. There's blackjack here. If you go in the basement, there's a slot machine that takes 10 coins at a time. Once you have the VIP card, there's a 100 coin slot machine here, so if you like to play slots and want to do big bets, there you go. And there's even a poker table here. But that's not what I'm here to talk about. Today, we're here for Action Bingo. It's a fairly simple concept. You have a 555 grid of numbers, which go from 1 to 25. I'll stick with a 1 bet just to show how the payouts work. The game will randomly draw 13 numbers out of the bin there. When one of the balls is dropping, they're grouped into four groups plus the center. While the ball is dropping, you can rotate the balls in the group. If you like where you have it placed, you can press A to drop it more quickly. And basically the trick to this, to the extent that there is a trick, is you always want to leave each of these boxes positioned so that it is possible to get bingo without ever being able to move them again, because there's no guarantee you will be able to move any of them again. If there are several ways you can do it, take your pick of whatever seems more likely or gives you the most opportunities. But as you can see, I already have five across the bottom there, so that is a win. One in a row. If you are in a position where one more ball gives you the potential to get an additional bingo, you'll be offered the Ball of Chance, or Chance Ball, which should be Chance Ball. If that lands in a spot that would give you an additional bingo, in this case the 7 or the 10, then in addition to the winnings for that extra bingo, you get an additional times 5 multiplier to your winnings. However, if it is not in a place where it wins, you get nothing. And you can't even fast forward the ball dropping. So let's play that again, trying to get Bingo just to demonstrate. Okay, when there's one ball in a section, it does not matter where you put it because there is no possible way you can get Bingo with a single ball in a section. It just doesn't line up on anything. If you get two, then you can start doing things. Like in this case, they're right, they're crossed from each other, so you can have it so it goes sideways like that. Here I have several different ways I can align it. And there I waited too long and messed it up. With this position, the only thing you can do is put potential diagonal, so set those up in the diagonal when there's one between them. Here we have four in a row, so we can get two of the sides at the same time. There's the center ball, as I mentioned. When you get that, the center is its own group. There's nothing to rotate, it's just in the center. And here we go, we have a diagonal. This is up to five balls. Again, it doesn't matter too much what you do there. And here. We can get bingo this way. We can get bingo this way. You can't do both. But each one bingo you get is worth twice your bet. Or rather, doubles your bet. So if you bet one, one bingo is worth two. If you get two bingos, that's worth four. If you get three, which is the most that's possible with 13 balls, or even 14, then you get eight times your bet. Do another round. Here we go. Sometimes you will get golden balls. It looks from the appearance of it, at least, that there can be two of them in a set. I don't think I've seen more than one at a time. But the significance of the golden ball is that if you get a bingo that includes the gold ball, that further doubles your payout. If you have it, say, in the corner, and you can do multiple bingos off of that, then each bingo that it is part of will, will double the bet. 
let's say you get two bingos and each of them has the gold ball in it, that's two for the first bingo, four for the second, doubled to eight because one has the gold ball, doubled again to 16 times your bet because they both have the gold ball. We have one in a row. I will not be trying for the ball chance this time. And as you can see, we have double, double the bet for one bingo plus one gold ball. As I was saying, the strategy here is to always try to line these up so that it is possible to get a bingo without being able to move them again. So, here we can do this, we can do this, we can go for the diagonal. It depends on what you feel is the most likely to work. In this case, doing it that way gives two chances to match, depending on what drops elsewhere. Here we'd go for the diagonal because that's all that's a possibility. Here, straight across the short side because that's the only thing that can do. And there we go, we get five in a row. And just wait for this to finish up. Put two across there, and... and here we have two possible places the ball of chance could work out. So we have the nine, we have the 24. I'm going to give it a try and see if maybe we can get one of those. And nope, it's the 25, so it's nothing. That is a tendency with a ball of chance. You get one ball, it either works or it doesn't. If it doesn't, you lose everything. Uh, Odds-wise, it's only worth doing if there are at least two possible ways where you can do it, because it's effectively ten times the payout if it works. And there are twelve empty spots, so if you have a one in twelve for a... If you have a one in twelve chance to get ten times your payout, that's not worth it. Now, for the two spots, then that's, uh... 2 in 12, or 1 in 6 chance to get times 10, so that, if you're playing the odds, that is worth it. So center ball, that's a 2. Actually, I should probably do this, because we have the center ball ready, so that's guaranteed to be able to be something. And here we go, 2 wins. We'll not try for the ball chance. And there we go. Of course, if you actually want winnings here, you should bet as much as you can. Press up to increase your bet by 10, left and right to go up and down 1. Bet max is out at 99, so not quite 100 points. Let's play through a quick round, see how this goes. Aim for the diagonal because that's how these line up properly. That third ball does absolutely nothing for us in that box. There's a center. We want to align this so that the Gold ball has a chance to match. And one more ball left. And that gets a second bingo anyway. Again, there is one place where the chance ball could get a winning, but it's not worth it. So there, winning of 396. We bet basically 100, got basically 400 back. That's a decent amount. And as you probably noticed just from watching me play this, if you always line things up so that you have a chance in a match, you will win most of the time. It's not a sure thing. There are possible layouts where you it's, there's no possible way you can get a match no matter what you do with it. But most of the time. Most of the time, if you try to line them up like this, you will get something. Okay, and there we go across, and we have something. Two somethings. Now here we have two possible ways the ball of chance could lower, so we'll play the odds and say... Well, the odds are not in our favor today. And again, you cannot fast forward that. When the other balls are dropping, you can press A to drop them faster, but the chance ball, you don't get that opportunity. Ah, here we go. We have a ball of chance that actually wins. So you see, I have two bingos now, because that finished one, so... Our bet was not quite 100, so normally we get... 200 for the horizontal line. Doubled to 400 because of the second. Doubled to 800 because of the gold ball. Well, not quite 800, because we're only betting 99, not a true 100. So this would normally be worth 800, but because of the win with the chance ball, it's worth five times that, or just about 4,000. So if you manage to win with that, it's a significant gain. 
The problem, of course, is it is random, it is completely unreliable. The thing with that, however, is the game does seem to determine the balls in advance. So if you're using state saves, rewinds, tool assisted, anything, looking at memory in the right spot, you can cheat. If you're so inclined. But if you're just looking to have fun, just play it normally. You will win most of the time. I can't imagine a real casino allowing these kinds of odds. Uh, you could make a real game of it by having, say, multiple players and only the first one wins or the one with the best bingos or something like that, so that there are multiple people playing in at once and only one gets a payout. But as a solo game, this just would not work in a casino. And when you're done, you just say, don't play anymore. And of course, the whole point of getting casino coins, other than stocking up on them for fun, is the prizes. At this price runner, we have a lot of strange and varied wild things. The most worthwhile things are the jewel sonar. This has no description in the English version, but if you use that in a dungeon, it will send out a ping noise, like a radar sonar. And pulses will come back for each unopened chest in the dungeon. This is especially useful later on when a certain side quest sends items into chests that you've already opened and you have to track them down again. The other thing is this Dragon Blade. It is among the most powerful, arguably the best weapon in the game. It has a high attack power, it gives you a bonus to crit rate and damage, and it has this IP that damages all enemies and does extra bonus to damage to dragon types. There are a lot of powerful dragons in the game, including an optional boss, so this makes us an extremely good weapon. It also has, I think, the single highest attack power of anything, so yeah, it's expensive, but it is quite good. These other weapons, uh, other weapon runes, items, things, these are more novelties than anything else. They have low stats. They have pretty good IPs. Uh, they have some status resistances or immunities, but again, they're basically novelties, they have very niche uses, if anything. If this were a game like some of the 3D Dragon Quest where armor can change your appearance, that might make them more interesting. You have a whole full funny set of things that both Tia and Selen and Artie can use. I'm sure there's been fan art of this, but as it is, these really just aren't worth getting. Anyway, this has been Arafelon playing a bit of the casino, mostly action bingo, in Lufia 2.